this is the story of that lonely rock of its strength and mystery of its successes and excesses it is a story with an end but without a conclusion Prisons have been called black flowers in the garden of civilization. There, a mile and a half out in San Francisco Bay, is what until recently has been the blackest flower in the American garden. Even its name, Alcatraz, rings with a dark sound, with the blackness of hatred, desperation, and loneliness. The rock has always been a lonely place. People have kept their distance. And even when it was used, the loneliness lived with the men who were caged there by steel and concrete and vicious bay currents. Likewise, it's been a place of mystery. Nature shrouds it with a seemingly perpetual fog or haze. From the bay's native Indians came a legend, portraying it as the home of mysterious and evil spirits. And when men made it a cage, they deliberately shed no light on its secrets. But black and lonely and mysterious as Alcatraz may be, it squats out there in the bay a satisfying symbol of strength and security. It has protected our shores and it has fulfilled the primary purpose of all prisons. The first job of any jail or prison is to protect the public, to securely lock up those criminals who must be restrained. Alcatraz has done that job well. Notably, in the crime-plagued 30s, when people demanded safety. But despite the rock's effectiveness in its basic role, it has for years been a center of controversy. It has been hotly discussed and debated. Without doubt, much of this controversy has grown out of a lack of solid information. Little news of a specific nature has ever left the island. Few people, other than inmates and employees, have stepped ashore for a close look at the prison and its operations. Public records tell only a cold statistical story all of which has kept the outside world in the dark. And in the absence of facts, rumors and half-truths and vague suppositions have made the rounds. Today, Alcatraz is closed. Reporters and cameras have been permitted to visit the island. It is possible now to get at some of the truth, to penetrate the fog of mystery for a look at what few people have seen. In the beginning, the rock belonged to the birds of the bay, to the seagulls and pelicans. Thus the name, Alcatraz, Spanish for pelican. Now, with the island virtually deserted, the birds are taking over again. The rock was given back to the gulls in June, 63. Some people asked why. Others suggested an answer. The prison had been closed because, they claimed, three convicts had successfully broken out, embarrassing officials who said the island was escape-proof. Maybe the cons escaped. Maybe they dropped. They left no traces either way. But the suggestion was misleading. The prison's exterior provides all the reason necessary for the shutdown. The place is literally falling to pieces. Years of service, lack of funds, salt-laden fog have all taken a heavy toll. It was get out or face a costly repair job. The Federal Bureau of Prisons got out. The shutdown left the island with only the birds, an army of ghosts, a sagging reputation, and a few lonely custodial families. For years, the rock owned a reputation as America's toughest stir. It was pictured generally as a Devil's Island, Tower of London, and Black Hole of Calcutta rolled into water. Tales were told of convicts driven insane by the island's conditions. Rumors were passed of black dungeons and torture chambers. 
none of these tales and rumors have been verified some inmates admittedly suffered mental disturbances but this happens in every maximum security penitentiary one thing is not denied alcatraz was tough it was meant to be that way it was meant to defeat vicious public enemies who were making shambles of the law and defying decency it was meant to punish and to warn In the past, reporters have tried to picture for a curious public the real secret of the rock's toughness. Most of these attempts have been guesswork. If you ask the man who did time there, he will tell you the best description has been provided by a former inmate turned writer. In his memoirs, he called Alcatraz a prison of the mind. The rock has always been a curiosity to people of the San Francisco Bay Area. It became nationally notorious just three decades ago in 1934. In that year, the United States Department of Justice moved in to use it to cage the cruel criminals who were terrorizing the country. This is the cage, 336 cells in two massive blocks. Here were penned some of the most ruthless troublemakers of modern times. Scarface Al Capone, top dog of a vicious pack. Creepy Alvin Carfus, kidnapper and escape artist. Machine Gun Kelly, killer and notorious bootlegger. Basil Bangart, thief and jailbreaker. Bugs Moran, mobster. Roy Gardner, last of the old time bad men. And in more recent years, mass murderer Billy Cook, hoodlum Mickey Cohen, extortionist Frankie Carbo. Names a blue book of the underworld. With inmates like these, no chances were taken. Few other pens have been so thoroughly equipped with security systems and devices. By comparison with many prisons today, these cells are almost luxurious. Five feet wide, nine feet deep, they housed only one man at a time. In other places, similar space is often occupied by two or three. But life at Alcatraz had other drawbacks. It was all rigid routine and constant observation. There were no honor systems, no trustees, no special rewards. In official parlance, time spent on the rock was maximum security, minimum privilege. There was little to break the circle of routine was an existence of certainty. There were, of course, escape attempts. Every one of the some 1,500 men who did time on the rock thought about a breakout at one time or another. 39 actually tried to reach freedom. 26 were caught, seven were killed, the others are listed as drowned. This hole in the prison roof is a leftover of the bloodiest escape try, the famed Battle of Alcatraz in 1946. Desperate cons held the cell house for 23 hours and gave up only when the Marines stormed the building, cut the hole, and dropped grenades inside. When it was all over, five men, two officers, and three inmates were dead. 17 lay wounded, some critically. Convict ringleaders died, reportedly, of grenade concussion in this utility corridor between the cells. Another much publicized break occurred in mid-1962 when a trio of prisoners removed tiny ventilators in their cell walls and climbed up the utility corridor to the roof. Somehow they reached the beach and entered the numbing water. They've never been seen again. Some people believe they reached the mainland. Prison officials say they drowned. The dining room was always one of the rock's hot spots. Taking advantage of the close quarters, cons often attempted to revenge themselves or settle differences with a concealed slash of a contraband knife or with a vicious blow to the groin. Overhead tear gas cartridges triggered from the gun walks were necessary to keep order. No mysteries or rumors ever originated here. But it's vividly a part of the Alcatraz pattern of certainty, a pattern demanding a time, a place, for everything.
prison hospital was also part of the pattern no one suffered from a lack of care but it was unlike most hospitals steel bars and unbreakable locks caged patients routine was as rigid as the cell block there was no gold brick every move was watched closely carefully this cell was the hospital's only novelty for many years it housed the brilliant but psychopathic Robert Straub famed Birdman of Alcatraz and here, the Rock's residents got their only privileges, church services weekly, movies every other week. In the Alcatraz schedule, there was little time for recreation. Brief breaks in the yard were a treat, a release from the rigid routine. They helped in curbing some trouble, but also prompted difficulty. Inmates could mix, hatch escape plans and disturbances, and pass contraband grim sport. In the prison glove and brush factory, routine again the rule. Monotonous machines, a task repeated again and again. Some inmates considered the work a privilege, others a curse. In most it bred conformity, in a few aggression. Treatment by routine and monotony was both the strength and the weakness of the rock. The purpose of Alcatraz, the Bureau of Prison says, was to change attitudes, to shape up overly aggressive convicts who caused trouble at other federal prisons. No one was ever sentenced directly to the rock. Inmates earned their boat trip by attempting escape or otherwise being a nuisance elsewhere. After serving some time here, most cons did shape up. But if they continued to be troublesome, they found themselves in this isolated cell block. Officially, it was labeled as the Special Treatment Unit. Cons called it the whole. It made the main cell block seem pleasant. Monotony and boredom were the heart of the treatment. Inmates seldom left their bare cells. Even when showering twice a week, they were locked behind bars. Security measures here were extraordinary. Even the locking devices were controlled electronically from an inaccessible gun walk. special treatment block had still another feature. Very aggressive or cantankerous characters found themselves cooling off in a dark cell. In prison slang, the black hole. So thorough were precautions in this block that even today, long after all prisoners have departed, the custodian guards still left on the island automatically wrap the cell bars, listening for tonal flaws indicating that someone has been at work with a saw or file. Guards of Alcatraz were a special breed, carefully selected, highly trained. Their work wasn't easy. They lived their lives peering into shadows, walking with eyes over their shoulders. Generally, they liked their job. They understood convicts and knew how to handle them. Most felt their work was constructive, and many liked living on the bleak island. It was quiet, and their apartments and homes offered an unequaled view of the bay and San Francisco. Countless tales and rumors have been spread about the rock. The most popular of these suggest that beneath the prison is a network of tunnels, dungeons, and torture chambers. And there is a basis for the tales. There are tunnels and a whole system of underground chambers. This sealed tunnel, two levels below the cell house, is a mystery. No one knows for sure what is behind its concrete bulkhead. No one knows what secrets it may be concealing. But it was closed off many years ago, long before federal convicts came. Likewise, no one knows anything about two small brick-lined, 
dead end rooms opening off the tunnel opening the mysterious tunnel however is only a small part of the picture directly below the main prison building down an old stairway in the cell block is a site which conjures up visions of the middle ages But there's nothing mysterious about all of this, and it dates back only a century. Alcatraz was selected by the Army of 1850 as the site for a mighty fort to guard the bay's entrance. Work began on the base four years later. These chambers were part of that original citadel sunk in the island top so that it couldn't be seen from offshore. There still are many signs of the Army's occupancy. These inner walls with gun slits were once the fort's outer walls overlooking the Golden Gate. In later years, the sunken citadel was expanded to house more men and serve more purposes. One of these purposes was the imprisonment of lawbreakers. The first of these were southern spies caught during the Civil War. Then came Indian scouts who had deserted. And a few years later, soldiers who had run afoul of army regulations. Then in the latter part of the century, it served as a cage for some of Geronimo's Apache friends who had stirred up a rebellion on a southwest Indian reservation. Basically, through all this time, the rock was an army post, but it was acquiring a reputation as a safe place to confine dangerous men. Here in the Alcatraz dungeon is found more clear-cut evidence of why the prison above had to be closed. Steel beams are rusted and strained to the danger point. Concrete and masonry is deteriorating, falling to pieces. Directly above all of this is the main prison building with its tremendous blocks of steel and concrete. And some engineers wonder why it's still standing. The underground chambers of the rock were not the only source of rumors and wild speculation. For years, people have talked of dark alleys and locked doors in a hidden Chinatown. But as in the case of the dungeons, only the talk is mysterious. Actually, the so-called Chinatown is a depressed passageway created when the fortifications of the island were expanded in 1866. Its age and shadowy appearance have endowed it with unjustified notoriety. Stories of vice and corruption of bodies and blood have been pure fiction. These were army quarters, unused in many years, and never a part of the prison on the hill above. Most have been locked and awaiting an eventual wrecking for as long as officials can remember. The army remained on Alcatraz for many years. In the early 1900s, the present cell house was built and the island became a disciplinary barracks. This portion of the main building was not modernized when the Bureau of Prisons moved in. It has been sealed off and unused since 1933 when the army abandoned the rock as unsuitable for a prison.
today the justice department also has abandoned alcatraz as unsuitable officials point out that not only is it falling to pieces but that its operation was too costly some officials also say off the record that the alcatraz concept of punishment without rehabilitation is no longer valid or necessary the day of the capone the carpets the bugs moran is passed there are many people, however, who disagree. They believe there will always be a need for a specialized institution to handle the incorrigible, the tough guys, the big shots who will not or perhaps cannot respond to enlightened rehabilitation programs, who will always cause trouble and confusion in less severe prisons. There are people, too, who say that there must always be an Alcatraz to deter the mad dogs who refuse to live by the rules of decency and law. These, of course, are all parts of an old argument. Confinement versus correction. Revenge versus rehabilitation. Time, experience, and public opinion will provide an eventual answer. Despite the controversy, secrecy, and mystery which surrounds Alcatraz prison, it served its purpose. It played a major part in curbing the public enemies who threatened the country. It served as a reminder of the nation's determination to protect its citizens. Even to the people who have found fault with its program, it cannot help but remain a symbol of strength and security.